Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the macOS 10 public beta and I'm going to be installing it on my Power Mac G3 blue and white right here that I have. And um, I'm actually doing this video to capture some footage for a later video. I'm actually, um, you know, having to install the public beta to get some footage for that later video. So I just figured why not go ahead and show you guys this operating system and the installation process and kind of talk a little bit about the history of it. So um, very briefly, this OS was released by Apple in the year 2000. And it was the first public beta release of Mac OS X. Um, Mac OS X had been in development for a while. There were um, a number of developer previews that were released before this. But this one was actually specifically intended for the general consumer market. And this was sold for $30. You could buy this from Apple. And you could actually, you know, use it. And Apple kind of wanted to get some, you know, people's feedback on uh, the new Mac OS X operating system that they were um, slowly going to be begin rolling out. Um, so yeah, this was the first ever public release of it. And uh, we're going to be installing it here. I'm just waiting for it to actually boot up. I just uh, started the video right as um, that the machine began to boot off the, the uh, CD drive. So we're going to see how this compares to later versions of OS X. There are actually some things in here that were changed or removed entirely from Mac OS 10.0 Sheeta, which was the first ever, um, you know, official release of Mac OS 10. So, um, yeah, so here it is right here. It just says Mac OS 10 public beta preparing installation. You can already see a little bit of the Aqua theme, which was a big feature in this release and in the first uh, official release of Mac OS 10 because uh, it totally changed the user interface of this operating system. It made it look you know, entirely different from uh, OS 8 and uh, OS 9 and just the you know classic Mac uh, OS is that uh, pretty much everybody was used to that was using a Mac at the time. So this was definitely a new and exciting feature. Um, and also obviously the whole change in actually how this OS was uh, structured as this actually uses a lot of the core technology that was uh, developed at Next and when Apple purchased that company they kind of used um, the Next Step operating system as the base you know with the more stable uh, Unix based operating system and uh, they just kind of used that and built the Mac OS look and feel on top of it. So. Um, yeah, so this is, you know, that's a, a very, very condensed history of it. There's obviously a lot more that I could say, but I'm just not really going to have time for in this video. Um, but so here we are, the uh, uh, installer has just come up on the screen. So we're, we're just going to go ahead and use English for the main language. Um, and we're going to go ahead and uh, click on continue. Um, this Power Mac G3 blue and white actually has mac os server 10.2 jaguar on it so this is an earlier version of os 10 so hopefully it'll just be able to overwrite that newer version that's already on here um so it's gonna go ahead and click on continue again and we're going to agree to the important information it basically you know tells you this is a public beta release it's not intended for uh everyday use it's pre-release software that sort of thing as we usually get with um, all of these beta software uh licenses so we're just going to go ahead and breeze through this. We'll click on Agree. And we're going to go ahead and select the uh, destination. So this is the drive. Um, I actually got this machine at a garage sale. And apparently from this uh, driver right here, it looks like it was used as a web server. And that would definitely make sense why Mac OS X Server 10.2 was installed on it. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, overwrite that. And uh, you can see that if we, we definitely want to go ahead and erase destination and format as and we have this uh, little drop down menu and there's either the unix file system or mac os extended let's go ahead and use the uh the unix file system and see how that works so uh it comes up with that very slow pop down if you notice that and it said uh you know installing the software will cause the destination drive to be completely erased we want to accept this because we want to erase um, all the data on it. I'm going to go ahead and click on install. So I will have to warn you guys that the hard drive in this machine is very loud. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it right now because the, the, uh, the, like the microphone that I'm using is more closer to me than it is to the computer. So 
it should do a pretty good job at kind of eliminating that sound, but you may be able to hear it a, a, a tiny bit in the background, but it is, you know, a very loud hard drive. One thing that I did want to point out, and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of touch on this more later, is the design of the menu bar. Apple um, actually changed this around in this version. For whatever reason, they decided to move the Apple logo to the center top of the menu bar, and um, kind of just have the text over here and, you know, all of the different menu options. Um, they eventually just decided to go back to the way it was before they moved the Apple logo over here and it acted as a menu again. Right now, if I click on this, it just won't do anything. This is just there for show, I guess, just to let you know that you are uh, using an Apple computer, I guess. I don't know what the purpose of that being there really was, but all of these... Um, Menus over here do work uh, exactly the same as they did in OS 9. They do have uh, the pinstriping um, design, as you can see. So it's kind of not just in, uh, in the about window, but also on these drop down menus. I don't know how well you can see that. But um, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, just pause this video here and let this go through the install process. And I will come back in a little bit once it's finished and we can take a closer look at the Mac OS 10 public beta. All right, so we are back. The machine has just finished installing and it just restarted. Now it's booting up for the first time into the Mac OS X public beta. So I'm just going to go ahead and let it do that here. And here we are presented with the setup assistant. I'm just going to go ahead and move this down here and I'll, I'll just go ahead and zoom in on it. Why not? So yeah, the setup assistant, what this basically is, is going to take us through the process of setting up things like our keyboard, user account, and networking, all the stuff that's got over here. We're just going to go ahead and click on the um, next button, we're going to go ahead and choose the US keyboard layout. We're going to go ahead and put in our name. So I'll go ahead and do, I'm doing this with one hand right now. Uh, Michael, the short name will be Michael. Password, I don't want to put a password. I know I don't want a password, okay. And um, we're currently not connected to the internet, so I'm just going to go ahead and choose I am not connected to the internet or a network. And uh, we are in the Eastern time zone. We only get Three, oh, we gotta just, okay, so we gotta actually click on the map and then we get uh, the list of time zones in that area. So that's, that is pretty nice. We're gonna go with the Eastern time zone. And uh, today's date, so the internal clock in this is all, you know, screwed up, so it thinks it's 1969. Um, I probably shouldn't even bother doing this because it's just gonna reset itself when I restart the machine. It's just gonna tell us what it's gonna do, so it's going to create a user account for Michael. You will be the administrator and you're not connected to the computer. We're gonna click go ahead. And it's gonna go ahead and configure the system. So we just finished restarting. I'm gonna go ahead and type in my username here and go ahead and log in. And uh, yeah, so this is it. This is Mac OS 10 public beta. We're logging in for the first time. All right, so we are back. I just went ahead and logged into the Mac OS 10 public beta. And what I wanted to do very briefly is just kind of talk about um, a few differences between this and later versions of OS 10, things that were only present in this public beta release and possibly in some of the earlier versions of Mac OS 10. So I already mentioned when I was going through the installation process, the fact that the Apple logo is in the center of the menu bar rather than being over to the left like it normally is. So all of the functions that the Apple menu would normally do in later versions of OS X is now contained in this desktop button right here. So this is where that you go to see about this Mac, you go to your dock and desktop preferences and system preferences, and this is where you would actually log out of your session. And obviously because Mac OS 9 and OS 10 are, are so different, the Apple menu in OS 9 uh, does have some of these same functionalities, but you're not going to go here to view all of your different applications like you would in, in OS 9. So I'm just going to go ahead and go into About This Mac right here, and I'll show you the About info. So it's calling itself Mac OS 10 Public Beta Build 1H39, and this machine has 1 gig of RAM and a PowerPC G3 processor. So there's not as much information as there uh, would be in later versions of OS 10 where it would show like your serial number and your model number and all of that. And also there's a finder logo here rather than the Apple logo. So that is also kind of interesting as well. Let's go ahead and zoom back out here. Um, another thing that I kind of want to talk about is there are a lot of design cues in this public beta here that were actually taken from Next, from Next Step and Open Step. And that can definitely be seen in the finder right here. So if I go ahead and open the finder, um, I'll go ahead and bring this down and zoom in on this as well. 
And in here, if you have used Next Step or Open Step, or even if you've just seen it, this might look a little bit familiar to the Workspace Manager from Next Step and Open Step. And it definitely does that way to me. Um, all of these like shortcuts up here at the very top where you can just uh, click on one of these and it'll bring you to uh, a specified folder on the computer. Um, definitely reminds me of the Workspace Manager. Obviously, all of that functionality that was in the Workspace Manager and the whole design, you know, that's not here. They didn't just go ahead and make like a whole carbon copy of it, but um, they have definitely, I guess, been inspired by that. So that is, you know, pretty awesome. And this whole finder in general just looks way different than it would in later versions of OS X. Uh, another thing that I want to also point out is system preferences. Uh, system preferences kind of has uh, a totally uh, different design than it would in later versions of OS X as well. And you could also say that they have taken some cues from Next Step and Open Step in the System Preferences window as well. So basically how this works here, I mean, I'm sure we all know how System Preferences works on a Mac. It contains all of your different panes for modifying system settings. But what's very unique about this version is this bar up here at the top where you've got these shortcuts. So you've got a show all view right here, and then you have some shortcuts. And you can actually customize these to you know whatever you want. So let's say that I don't want this keyboard one here. I just go ahead and drag it off and it does a Mac OS X uh, dock-like effect where when you take something off of the dock, it does that poof effect. So it does that. And you know, let's say that I want to have classic over here. You can totally rearrange this to your liking. It's definitely not like this today. It's totally different. Um, even the whole system preferences window, it's much wider in the public beta here than it would be in later versions. Another slightly interesting thing in the public beta here is that the finder isn't actually called the finder, it's called the desktop, as you can see by this menu label up here. And also by if I just mouse over the finder in the dock, you can see that it says desktop rather than finder. Now when you go ahead and open it, it says finder up here, but for whatever reason they were calling it desktop in both the dock um, and on the menu bar. Uh, something else is if you go to the desktop menu and go into dock and desktop preferences in the public beta and in the very first release of OS X, so that was 10.0 Cheetah, you would actually go into this separate application to modify your dock and desktop preferences. It was not contained within the regular system preferences. So they totally changed this in uh, you know much later versions. Obviously now today it's not like this at all, but you actually had this separate application to modify your dock and your desktop background and even things for your disks and a uh, you know few finder settings here as well. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go back into system preferences to show you something else. Um, that is in the public beta that was not in any later version of OS X. And that is if we go into general right here. And if we go into general, uh, under this show application in menu bar, you, you had the option to use the application name or use the icon. So if I go ahead and uh, change it to use the application icon, what will happen now is that where that text was up here is now changed to an icon. So this is the system preferences icon. If I go ahead and quit out of system preferences, it will change to a finder icon. So this was something that they totally dropped when they uh, you know, just decided to bring the Apple logo back over to its regular spot. But in the Mac OS X public beta, it was here. And honestly, you know, it was very interesting to see how they implemented that. But honestly, that is pretty much it. That is a, a just a little brief overview of the Mac OS X public beta. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe down below if you want to see more videos like this in the near future. And as always, guys, I just want to thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.